Now here's a cool car I found on my shelf back home. Let's open it up and see what's in the box. What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hello everybody, my name's Trevor Ursulescu and I'm the owner of Monster Hobbies in High River, Alberta, Canada. If you've subscribed to my channel, welcome back to another great unboxing episode. And say, if you are new to the channel and you like watching these unboxing videos, why don't you subscribe? It'll be great, and if you click that notification bell down below as you subscribe as well, you will be updated every time a brand new What's in the Box video comes out or any of the other great videos that I do on my channel. And while you're checking things out, why don't you check out our Patreon page? And I'm going to put a link to that down below in the descriptions. And if you become a Patreon member, hey, guess what? You get some great benefits like getting your name in the title at the end of the video, as well as depending on if you started a buck or more, you can get stickers from Monster Hobbies, you can get a t-shirt and even a special model kit. So check out our Patreon page today. And now, without further ado, let's go and check out the Bill Cushenberry's Silhouette Car. And now, hobby fans, we take you into the future, as seen in 1963, with the Bill Cushenberry's awesome Silhouette Car. And I just love this nostalgic artwork on the box top. Here you have this futuristic elevated superhighway with a nice little fence rail up there and this nice couple that are in the future. Looking down at this great structure down here, which I guess is some kind of auto hotel, and uh, the nice little platform up above all the trees and forest. Just gotta love that 60s art, it is so cool. So when Bill Cushenberry made this original car, it was 1963, and he entered it into a special contest which was called the Tournament of Fame. And it was a contest 1963 Grand National Roadster Show, which was strictly a professional contest only open to the top customizers of the time. And with this car, this amazing car, Bill Cushenberry won first place in his class and he and his wife got a free trip to Europe out of it and many other cool things. So. AMT under RC2 has released this kit a long time ago, back in 2007, just around that time that they got up, bought up by a round two. But as you can see, they give you the original Ford 427 wedge engine with an optional blower to it, the bubble top, the four wheel wire wheels, the optional Astro custom wheels, and this great detailed chassis. And as we look around the box, you also see that you can build it one of three ways, stock, street, or drag racing. And it's got the super feature, which is this very cool trailer to display your car in. Keeps the dust off it. <laughs> and this is a skill level two kit for ages 10 and up. And I'll tell you one thing about this box art, it is a lot better than the earlier edition that I bought, which was the Buyer's Choice Award version. And as you can tell, I mean, this this was RC2 at its finest back in the day, with the box looking very uninteresting. I mean, look at that, like a red car with a red trailer, okay, yep. Yeah. And then you compare that with this awesome artwork, like, wow. <laughs> You can't beat the thing. So, let's go and open up the lid on this baby and see what's in the box. Hey everybody, welcome down to Mike's Transmission out here in High River, Alberta, Canada, where today we have a special car coming in. It is the Hot Wheels Silhouette car from 1967, a Bill Cushenberry car, and it needs a transmission service. So it's coming right up here onto the ramps where we, our technicians can get to work on it right away. All right, guys, I'm kidding around, but uh, how many of you actually had this 1968 silhouette car by Mattel? This, of course, was also a Bill Cushenberry car that they commissioned off him, and this is an authentic one because, as you can see, it's got that cool horseshoe-style suspension, which gave all four wheels the independent suspension. 
And as you can see in my other hand here, I've got a special treat. This of course is the reproduction from the Hot Wheels Highway 35 Anniversary Special. As you can tell, because it's got, of course, that Hot Wheels emblem right on the back lid. Did you have one of these? If so, if you had either one of these cars, or if you actually had the Hot Wheels garage set, please put it in the comments below. And now, let's get back to our review. And here we go, taking off the lid, looking at these wonderful instruction sheets. To begin with, we have the silhouette, again, created by Bill Cushenberry. And down here, it gives you all the nice, cool write-up, which I will not read in this episode. There's our engine block going together. Very, very basic uh, instructions. And there it is with the dual air cleaners, the stock version. And then we have our race version with the great big blower sticking out of there. It's a GM 671 blower with Weber carbs and a nice air scoop. And they also give you the paint colors. So they're saying paint your front cover red, the engine block red, which is the same on the stock version. Doesn't really tell you what kind of red, although this was a Buick and in 63, Buick motors were painted red. So there's our basic body going together. And there's some quite interesting hinge arrangements. There's one for the front of the hood and then there's one that helps you raise the windshield up and down so you can get in and out of the car. And there's a hinge on the trunk. So you have three hinges in one model. Amazing. And then we have our interior. That's a stock steering wheel with the two little arms sticking out. And then you can also put in this Corvette steering wheel, which is interesting. A car with seat belts, which is kind of cool for a custom. And on the back here, we've got our frame going into this underbody pan. So the, the car is basically like a clamshell. It's got a top and a bottom, which could be a bit tricky to put together. And then we have our, oh, there's the body to chassis assembly step. And then it's showing over here, the final assemblies. And this is where you get to decorate up your car with some custom bits. There's the right fender and left fender that go over there. You can put in a chopped windshield if you don't want the uh, opening bubble top. And then they have the wire wheels. And then they show you, of course, the stock version the way Bill Kirshenberry had built it originally with the chrome spears on the hood and the Astro wheels with the knockoffs. And then of course at the very end you get your trailer assembly instructions which are pretty quick and easy. And of course you want to paint your trailer to match your car. Now we're going to look at the decal sheet. And how many of you people have actually built this model and used this de decal sheet or decal sheet? Is it decal or is it decal? <laughs> it depends on where you are and what you want to say. I like to say decal. I'm in Canada. Hello. <laughs> okay, so we have this uh, Pandora's box here, which is interesting. And these really cool pinstripe details. And it is a black decal, so Make sure to paint your car any color but black or dark gray, because you'll never see these on there. And now let's take a look at our other components in the box. And here in clear, opening up with the old Scout pocket knife, we have actually double bagged in here. That's interesting. They must have really wanted to protect us against scratches from other parts in the model. So, we have, of course, our nice clear bubble dome. And there's a chopped down windshield for your racing version. And you've got your separate headlights with the waffle pattern in the headlights, just like the real lamp. And now, speaking of glass, here we have some more glass, and this would be for your trailer assembly. And there's a nice 
big clear dome for, I believe, the back of the trailer. There's the hinge. So this would open up to get your car in and out. Then again, double bagged, we have the second windshield. And this again is for the trailer. And this is a big, big clear egg, half an egg. And there's hinges there again to open and close it in your trailer. Are you liking our video so far? Well, if so, subscribe and hit that bell. And now we'll begin with our engine and chassis components. So right here, we have our full out frame. And I do believe this frame was cut down from a Buick and then re-altered. But if you guys know better, please leave a message in the comment and tell me if I'm right or wrong. And there's our Buick motor right there with some nice detail. The transmission has the shift linkages and things like that. I do believe these are custom headrests. Not entirely sure. I didn't see that part in the instruction sheet, forgive me. Okay, here's our rear axle with the shortened drive shaft, which of course would fit nicely in there, and our seat belts with that nice, nice detail on there. Okay, there you can see it. And then, to top the motor off, we have all our intake manifolds. This flatter one being for the blower, and this one being for your dual carbs. And you've got two different water pump front ends. One for, of course, your blower belts. Timing chain covers. <laughs> and then we have our wheel backs. And that's part of the trailer, the little drop-down component where your car would drive up on it. Again, another hinge. This kit has a lot of hinges, as we're going to find out. And that's basically most of your engine components. And now here we have our interior, and you can see it's got that nice tuck and roll right in there. Very nice, as well as the little handbrake down here, or whatever that is. And it's basically an egg-shaped interior, which is quite interesting. Very cool. There's our custom front fenders and our steering wheel and the little hood cover. And there's our front bit with the radiator right in there. Hello everybody, this is Trevor from Monster Hobbies doing a quick little shout out to the real Mike's transmission out here in High River, Alberta, Canada. And if you've got a transmission that's giving you some trouble, come down and check Mike. He's really good at what he does. And he's also my landlord. So hey! <laughs> And I had to laugh when I opened up my Hot Wheels set for that little segment before with the Silhouette Hot Wheels. Because when I opened it up, it said Mike's Transmission right there. So, the, letting you in on the fun of that. And it's amazing that a High River business such as Mike's Transmission actually appeared in a 1980s Hot Wheels set. So without further ado, let's go back to our review. And then we have a few more pieces. These would be trailer bits, the trailer hitch, some other parts, and of course this top part of the body. And as you can see, it's quite an interesting aerodynamic profile, very futuristic for the time, and even in our times. And it's got a nice carpet molded into the inside of the trunk right there. And here's our underbody pan which is very basic, but keep in mind that this was aerodynamic and Bill Cushenberry didn't want open frame underneath there for wind drag, to fight against wind drag. And that's how our body would go together. Have you built this car before? Have you experienced any trouble putting the top and bottom of this clamshell together? And how did you get around painting it without painting all the details or getting a mismatch in color? Please comment in the comment section below. And now, with those body bits out of the way, we have our other tree here, which has the trunk lid and some wheel backs. I do believe these are the trailer wheel backs. Could be mistaken. And then we've got inner 
bits, I do believe again, for our trailer. And here's two little pieces that fell off the parts tree. That is the uh, front for your glass, and of course our little battery right here. Hey everybody, I thought I'd just interject in my own video here and break it up for a minute. I wanted to show you the custom version of the silhouette that I've been working on. And this is what it looks like with those cool extra fender bits on there. And of course, the little opening hood, which none of this is together. Now, I added a little bit of white strip styrene onto the hood here because there was a bit of a gap between the hood and the body. I'll come back with that later. Uh, have you ever run into those kind of troubles? If so, let me know in the comments and how you solve them. And there, of course, is our opening trunk. So again, this is what it looks like with those wicked fender flares on there. And now I'll return you to the regular review. Now we look at our trailer. And again, it's sort of got that same silhouette profile. And as you can see, there's where that glass would go. And again, it's quite a big piece of clear glass, just as a reminder. And here we have the underbelly of it. This is the part where the car goes, and it's got these nice indentations for the wheels of your silhouette to drop in, locking them into place. And again, much like the car, it's got that flat pan underbody to again eliminate any wind drag or whatever might be coming underneath the trailer. And speaking of the trailer, Here's our car body going into the trailer, and as you can see, it's sloped to match the front of the underpan. And of course, your wheels centers would line up and fall right into those depressions. Now we're going to look at our chrome bits and cut this bag open and see the nice, beautiful chrome. Everybody loves chrome. Do you like chrome or do you like to strip your chrome off? If so, leave us a message in the comments section. And while you're there, what do you use to strip off your chrome? Okay, now looking at our chrome, which is sacred. Don't strip it off. No, I'm just joking. Okay, <laughs> we have these nice side exhaust pipes. Look at that detail on there. Now, if you gave that a black wash, it would really pop up. And there's, of course, our air cleaners and oil pan, valve covers, carburetors. You get this nice chrome license plate that says trailer on it. 1964 is stamped in there. Let's see if the camera can pick that up. Yeah, the telephone rang right at that instant. You know, when sometimes when I'm filming these videos, the telephone just rings. Does that ever happen to you when you're making videos? If so, leave a comment, let me know. All right, getting back to this review. Here you can see we've got our wire wheels and we also have those nice Astro wheels, as they call them. And making sure the car stops are these really cool looking Buick fins. These are disc brakes, sorry, drum brakes. Boy, the phone call must have messed me up. Okay, they are drum brake housings and they were finned, which was a Buick type thing back in the 60s, which was very popular. Every hot rodder wanted these finned brakes because, hey, they look cool. And these are your front uh, trim pieces for your hood, the chevrons and those sort of things. And of course we have that really cool looking uh, dual post steering wheel, which of course they were trying to make everything look like jets back in the day. Now let's take a look at our second chrome. Uh, chrome parts tree here, opening up again with our 1986 Scout pocket knife. Ooh. Okay, Woo. yes, bouncy chrome, made out of rubber, no, made out of plastic. There's our wire wheel tops, and these look really good. Another place to find cool wire wheels is in the AMT 1964, 65, Buick Riviera kit. I think it's a 65. Topic for another video. Okay, here you have these nice silhouette side bits, which I believe either go in the car or go on the trailer. I think they're for the trailer. And again, the spears for the front of the hood. 
and there we have the wheels for the trailer which are not quite as cool as the other wheels and you can see the top of the blower and our front uh, suspension components as well as a knockoff cap here and there's some more knockoff caps for the wheels I believe that's a radiator one and our chrome exhaust pipes and a little teeny grill right there which is very nice and we've got our separate springs also chrome plated quite a good job on the chrome plating and where would our car be without a nice cool set of tires well, I'll tell you it'd be sitting up on blocks <laughs> okay so we have actually two sets of tires in this kit which are really cool we've got of course our original 1963 stock style Firestone tires. These are quite common to AMT kits of the past. You get four. And as you can see, it's got the nice Firestone writing up there. And these were always cool to paint in big white walls on them. Although this car would use more of a pinstripe type white wall. And if you're actually looking for white walls with that pinstripe, always check out AMT's round two website uh, because they have the parts packs which have these tires with those white walls on them and speaking of the other tires in my other hand here we have the Goodyear style sorry these are BF Goodrich radial TAs and they have that really cool type of uh, tread pattern on there and you get four and they all match they're all the same size no uh, extra width or anything sometimes in these custom cars you get the rear tires are bigger and the front are lower to give it a rake in appearance which means basically that the car is not sitting level flat like this it's like this and there are the tires for it so as you can see again another nice molding and finally the last component in our kit is the rear tail lamps and these nice red side spears for the custom version and metal axles this is still one of those older kits that use the metal axle through the body but that's okay gives you a nice solid foundation for your car to sit on and that brings us to the conclusion of the unboxing for bill cushionberry's 1963 showstopper silhouette well, thank you very much for watching this video and great review of the old Silhouette Kit by AMT. And I want to actually get your opinion this time around. Next week, do you want to see me unbox the old beer wagon? Or do you want me to unbox a Batmobile? Not necessarily this one, but maybe a better one. What is it, folks? Batmobile? or beer wagon let me know in the comments below and while you're at it you might as well go over to patreon and check it out remember at patreon your subscription can get you a shirt and that won't hurt so go down to patreon and check us out in the description below is a link click it and go and now if you want to check out our website, don't forget to take a look at that at www.monster-hobbies.ca where you can actually purchase some model kits, but not these ones. These ones are mine. Anyway, <laughs> we think you might like to see this video here and this video here, which is a review of some of our other unboxing kits, as well as check out this special video, which is tailored just for you. And don't forget to like and subscribe to us. And again, ring that bell, final ring-a-ling-a-ding-dong. And until next time, we will see you again on Monster Hobbies, What's in the Box?